It's great to be back uh, talking to people today. Uh, and as, uh, as you mentioned, I, uh, I'm Ted Spears, head of product architecture and planning, also on the board of directors of the RISC V Foundation. And my talk today is securing the new golden age of computer architecture. All right, before I get into that, I do want to talk about our FPGAs. Uh, so Microchip uh, acquired MicroSemi, and our FPGAs are FPGAs everyone really needs to hear about. Uh, so first of all, we're number one from low Earth orbit up to beyond Pluto. So our FPGAs are used in space. We're number one in that market. So just recently in 2015, uh, a satellite flew by uh, the planet Pluto and took spectacular pictures. It's our technology, our FPGAs that are needed for uh, doing that because we lead in reliability. A little bit closer to Earth at 30,000 feet. Uh, if you've ever been on an airplane, uh, I fly them a lot. Uh, there's, there's literally hundreds if not thousands of our FPGAs getting millions of people safely from point A to point B every day, uh, controlling the engines, uh, controlling the doors, the cockpit displays flight computers, and so forth. So reliability is one of our key uh, value adds. We're also the number one in security. Security is going to become more and more important in the uh, connected age uh, where, uh, and compute at the edge where everything is now exposed to attack. So our FPGAs, when they're born in a UMC fab uh, on a wafer, uh, they go into the, the test house, and from the very moment they, they, they see a, a probe, there's an HSM involved in the project, uh, in the process. So there's HSM is a hardware security module injecting keys, so no human sees the keys that go into our FPGAs. So once you move past wafer sort, you go to final test, and then there's the HSM again, and all the test data is folded up in a, a, a certificate that's signed by microchip, and it says this, this, this chip is legitimate chip. So you can then use this FPGA with the security baked in to then secure your entire application. So we call that womb to tomb security. You can only do that with our FPGAs. All right, so then we've wrapped this all up. We've, we have this family of FPGAs called Polar Fire. So Polar Fire, most secure, most reliable. It's also extremely low power and has some technology on that that is ideal for uh, inferencing at the edge. So we can do an eight by eight a dot product. We can do four operations in one second with one of our multipliers. So literally, uh, if you take a Xilinx or Altera FPGA, uh, we can do that same function in half the power. So uh, uh, if you're a system designer designing for the edge, uh, you can actually design your system to operate without a fan using our FP Polar Fire FPGAs. All right, so now moving from microchip uh, to RISC-V. Uh, a little bit about the foundation. So uh, Rick showed you the slide showing all the members uh, yesterday, but I want to kind of give you some color about who is the membership, who is in the foundation, who needs to be in the foundation. So you know, starting out, the board of directors, uh, we have seven, and we re represent companies, Microchip, of course, Google, David Patterson, NVIDIA, Rob Oshana from NXP came, came to Taiwan. Uh, also have Berkeley, uh, Professor Osanovich is from Berkeley. So that's the, kind of the board of directors uh, view of the RISC-V Foundation. So then there's lots of RISC-V IP providers. So this is what we wanted. We didn't just want one IP provider, then it would be no different than ARM. We want an ecosystem of IP providers all making money, all thriving with this uh, uh, technology. So there's ones of known, Sci-5 of course, uh, the inventors of RISC-V, uh, but, but really, you know, I knew RISC-V had arrived uh, when Andes made their announcement in uh, May 2017 in China. So I've, I've told my company, oh, RISC-V is great, RISC-V is great. And they said, well, that's just for startups and, and other people. But here, Andes is a real company selling billions of processors. They're betting their business, the future of their business, on RISC-V. That's a big signal to the world that RISC-V had arrived. So I you know, really think Andes has played a huge role in the uh, uh, advancement of, of RISC-V. Uh, so there's a lot of open source free cores, but I do want to point out uh, there's, there's two companies from, from Russia, Cintacore and CloudBear. Both are here, uh, uh, both exhibiting. Uh, both have uh, you know, just really awesome uh, computer architects designing their cores. So if you want to build a, a system with a RISC-V, for sure give Andy's a call, for sure 
sci give SciFi a call, but you also need to give Centicore and, and CloudBear a call. These, these guys are uh, uh, really excellent and really important part of the ecosystem. Okay, semiconductor OEM. So these are the people who make chips. So big companies, NXP, Microchip, are all part of the foundation. But then startups, uh, we talked about them yesterday. Green Waves, uh, low power IoT to Esperanto, you know, a, a, a data center AI engine. So, uh, you know, chip companies are joining the RISC-V Foundation. So this is uh, near and dear to my heart. I talked about it a little bit yesterday. This is where we make hardware cool again. It's the academia and research. We want kids, a new generation, to join uh, RISC-V. And they're doing that all over the world. The, the leading universities are, are switching to RISC-V and joining the foundation. And I didn't know what to expect when I came here to Taiwan, but we had lots of great papers yesterday from many universities in Taiwan. Uh, so I was really pleased to see that the RISC-V is, is caught on here in Taiwan. Uh, so that's, that, that was good to see yesterday. System OEM, so this is a little bit. So why does Western Digital care about RISC-V? Why does Talus care about RISC-V? If you make systems, you want a RISC-V strategy. Uh, it's going to be important for your future. I think in Western Digital's case, they, they want uh, people to innovate, to figure out innovative ways to connect to the storage that they make, uh, storage at the edge, storage in the cloud. So lots of big companies uh, are saying, what's our RISC-V strategy? And they're joining the foundation, and they're trying to make, make RISC-V happen to make their future happen. So then, there's, you know, what do you need to build uh, RISC-V? So there's the EDA and support uh, infrastructure is there, so companies like Cadence and Mentor, uh, Empiris, you know, these are all companies that make IP and technology and tools that let you build a RISC-V. And then once you have your RISC-V, the software guy needs to get, actually get it working. So we're building out a, a very robust uh, uh, you know, OS ecosystem, debug ecosystem, tools ecosystem. So IAR was one of the sponsors of this conference. Uh, you know, very crucial member of the ARM ecosystem is now supporting RISC-V. So the RISC-V ecosystem is attracting best in class to help the software guy use RISC-V. So data center companies are in RISC-V. So Google, uh, Oculus is Facebook, IBM, uh, Alibaba. So what, what a trend in the uh, uh, industry today is these big companies uh, don't want to wait for the chip companies to design the chip they want. They're, they're, they're making their own chips. Uh, so, so RISC-V is part of that strategy to make my own chips because they, they want to differentiate, they want to differentiate, they want to move quickly. So the big data center companies are all uh, joining RISC-V. Companies with big fabs, so we have Micron, we have TSMC, uh, we have Samsung. These companies can make the chips, so they're all part of the RISC-V foundation. And then emerging applications. Uh, so we saw yesterday AI talks. We saw a talk, a great talk uh, from, from uh, Cryptape, uh, crypto applications. So people who are doing emerging applications want to join the foundation. As I said yesterday, we're growing up together. Uh, we can innovate together. So, so if you're in a new emerging application, you want to join the foundation. All right. So now let's, let's talk about you know, when I, this, this term, the golden age, the new golden age of computer architecture. Uh, so this, coin, this term was coined by uh, uh, David Patterson and John Hennessy, and, and they, they, they presented it when they did their Turing lecture. So they, if you may, not, may know, they won the 2017 Turing Prize for computer science, and that's like the Nobel Prize of computer science. And their lecture was the, a new golden age of computer architecture. So rather than saying, oh, uh, Moore's Law is over, let's go home. They said, no, we actually had this massive opportunity in front of us, and, and they coined it the new golden age. And you know, there's four pillars of, of that golden age. You know, one is domain-specific hardware and domain-specific software. So I'm not going to talk about this today, but I think uh, in Andy's talk yesterday, they said RISC-V is where you start, and then, then, you, then you specify, you build the architecture for your domain on top of RISC-V. So RISC-V in a sense, has a, a secondary role uh, in this domain-specific architecture. But then open instruction sets, you know, that's obviously code for RISC-V. That's part one of the four pillars of the golden age. And then they talked about enhanced security. Uh, I think uh, Don mentioned yesterday, I think they were, uh, you know, the, uh, kind of appalled when they realized the state of computer security. They've been focused on power performance all these years. So all these technologies came into existence, but every new technology 
created a, a, a security leak that, that now needs to get closed. RISC-V actually can help close that. that that'll be, uh, I'll just kind of show you where we're, how we're doing on that today. So how do we build a uh, secure world from the ground up? Uh, so let's start at the ground. Uh, so one of the things, there's a lot of technical uh, working groups in the RISC-V Foundation, but one of the more key ones, and I think unique, is there's a formal specification working group. So the RISC-V ISA is uh, simple enough, and it's, it's just getting started. There's all this technology that's been developed to do uh, formal specifications. Uh, these formal specifications are, are simple, clear, the human can understand it, uh, and uh, they're precise and complete, that's important. There's no gaps, there's no holes. It's not just a spec that some student wrote, it's something that's formally uh, uh, proven. Then these, this, take that and it's also machine readable and executable. So uh, the, the formal spec is an important part of, of RISC-V. So one of the way, there's many ways that you can employ this, why this uh, formal specs are important, but one is in the area of compliance. Uh, compliance is one of the key uh, points of the RISC-V Foundation or, or, or jobs of the RISC-V Foundation. When you make a RISC-V chip and you want to stamp, you know, have David Patterson stamp RISC-V on it and sign it, uh, you need to pass the, the compliance test. And the compliance test is, is rooted in the, uh, in the formal spec. So, so the compliance test uh, is conforms to the formal spec. You run the uh, compliance test on your implementation and by extension your chip is formally proven to, to uh, 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 support RISC-V. So there's at least six uh, 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 formal specs that I'm aware of. So this is, there's lots of really smart people all over the world uh, participating in this. So we got India, we got uh, Austria, we got uh, Cambridge, we got uh, uh, yeah, both Cambridges, Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, and, and Cambridge, uh, England. Uh, yesterday, I saw a paper from uh, OneSpin uh, on their formal tools. So, so this this is kind of, you know, one thing that's enabling this this, this technology to be to actually come and, and hit the big time. The formal specs. It's hap risc five is kind of enabling that. So, one thing that's cool is there's all you know, these six tests out there, or six uh, formal specs. They all check each other. So, so it's a self-validating process. You couldn't do that if it wasn't open. So the openness is enabling this. So the very ground floor of RISC-V is, 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 is rooted in a formal specification that's checked over and over. All right, so, so what about security? So I, I, I showed you many ways that, uh, uh, you know, many reasons to join the foundation. But from day one, security has been a reason to join the foundation. So if you look at the foundation, there's a lot of defense companies. Uh, the, you know, BAE is a defense company. They attended the first uh, uh, workshop and, and everyone since. Uh, uh, Talis, Asselson, Northrop Grumman. Chip companies, uh, NVIDIA uh, actually, you know, secures, you know, game, video games. That's like one of the most prized uh, uh, threats or a prized thing to attack. NVIDIA has to secure that. So NVIDIA actually leads the uh, development of the uh, RISC-V uh, Trusted Execution Environment Working Group. Then, of course, NXP uh, is drawn to the security properties of RISC-V and microchip, of course. This is one of the reasons uh, uh, I was attracted to RISC-V uh, from day one. Security IP, there's lots of companies that have security IP, including Rambus. Uh, there's someone here today uh, supports uh, Rambus. Uh, and uh, HEX-5 did a great talk yesterday. Uh, so security IP. Uh, you want to join the foundation. And then finally, companies that, that do security services and tools. So uh, Tortuga Logic creates, has an EDA tool, so you can f basically prove that you're, there, once you've implemented your chip, there's no leakage path, so that your key gets, stays where you want your key to, key to be. Who's not allowed in the foundation is uh, uh, Meltdown Inspector. They tried to get into the foundation, but we said, no, no Meltdown Inspector. So if you're building a RISC-V chip today, you have an opportunity to make sure that uh, you're, you're not susceptible to uh, uh, these type of attacks. And uh, so next part of my talk is I'm going to tell you about a uh, uh, talk that we were given by uh, Gernot Heiser from Data61. Uh, uh, first of all, first I'll talk to you about the Security Standing Committee. Uh, so I, I saw all this energy around security, but I wanted it focused. And so 
uh, I drove the creation of what we call the RIS-5 Security Standing Committee. And security is a first-class citizen of RIS-5. This Security Standing Committee reports into the Board of Directors. And one of our jobs, of course, is to, to evangelize, show, tell people, show people that RIS-5 is what you need if you want a secure processing solution. Then we also make sure, we, we look up at a high-level view, and make sure that working group and the privilege uh, uh, conforms to what the t trusted execution environment uh, uh, working group is doing. So we have a high level view uh, uh, of, of what's going on in security. And then uh, one of the uh, key roles is to propose technical communities, uh, uh, technical working groups. So there's two are for, related to security. One is the trusted execution environment. The other is the crypto extensions. So one of the talks yesterday, uh, the next steps was uh, let me figure out how to accelerate my uh, uh, blockchain, which is hashing. So we're actually working on ways to formalize, leverage the vector extensions to, to do hashing uh, very efficiently with RISC V. Okay, so uh, now I get to uh, Gernot's talk about uh, 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 timing attacks. So that Spectre and Meltdown, uh, uh, especially Spectre, is a class of attacks known as timing uh, attacks. And uh, Gernot Heiser at Data61 is one of the people, maybe didn't discover it, but they've done a lot of the research in the area of timing attacks. And so they've got a paper that, that has a whole taxonomy of these type of attacks. And so he gave his talk, and, and kind of on the right side, or the red side of this uh, uh, left side, the, the red is, is a, uh, a, context, a, tr a, a context that you care about. Uh, and you care about the timing in this context. Uh, you care about it from a safety concern. If you care about safety, you want to make sure that timing is predictable. So, so that's, that, that's one area of safety. But security is the other side of that, uh, of that coin. And you want to make sure that uh, changes in timing uh, uh, can't be exploited in, in, in certain types of attacks. So they, they basically said, well, there's two types of things you can do with changes in timing that are going on in this uh, secure context. Uh, you can establish a covert channel where a bad guy, a, a Trojan, is running in the secure context and is actually sending information to, to someone outside of that secure context by basically uh, exploiting uh, aspects of the microarchitecture of that processor to change the timing that's going on in that context that can be observed and, and basically pass information from the Trojan to the bad guy sitting out there uh, uh, quietly in a uh, unsecured context. And then uh, there's something called a side channel, which doesn't involve a Trojan. So you can write, run your code and it's running in that processor and you're not aware, you're, you wrote this great software, but you're not aware that the microarchitecture is, is causing certain things to change the timing of how that, that program is, is executing. And so a side channel just sits there on the outside and can just watch what's happening, uh, uh, you know, delays and how, how long it takes for, for, for certain things to happen uh, and can get information like extract keys uh, basically due to these uh, uh, changes in timing that the uh, software guy had no idea what were going on and an artifact of the architecture. So Granat said, okay, I've done this research, I understand how these attacks happen, uh, but now let me, let me take the next step. How do I stop these attacks? So he says there's two ways to stop these attacks. Uh, one is partitioning. So if, as long as I can make sure that the secure context is separate from the uh, non-secure context, that, that helps me uh, uh, prevent this type of timing attack. And so a lot of uh, Don's uh, talk yesterday uh, uh, about uh, their trusted execution environment, HEX-5, talks about the partitioning that's actually native to RIS-5. But then there's another aspect. If you can't partition, uh, you need to be able to flush. So when you change context, you got to go back and erase the traces of, of what, what was going on before, like your uh, uh, branch prediction buffer and, and so forth. So if you can erase the, what's been happening, so if you can't partition, you must be able to flush, and, and so the, that's what Gornet said is needed. So he said, what we need is a new hardware software contract. Uh, the ISA is just uh, a spec that tells you this functionally happens, but it doesn't tell you anything about what's happening uh, at the microarchitectural state. The software guy needs some way to uh, manage what's going on at the microarchitectural state. And so he calls, he calls it the augmented ISA, the AISA. And so the uh, augmented ISA 
supports time protection, and I kind of just went through those. You either partition uh, the, uh, you know, the software guide be able to, to leverage the partitioning capability uh, in that microarchitecture, and if you can't partition, he's got to be able to uh, have ways, to, means to flush the state of that uh, 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 processor or that uh, secure context. So putting it all together, I, I call this the Risk Five uh, security stack. Uh, we talked about the ground floor. It's built on a starts at a formal specification in the ISA. Uh, your your implementation. Uh, is, is checked with the compliance suite that complies with this formal spec, and by extension, your implementation is formally proven when you do an a, a implementation that pass, passes the compliance suite. So the next layer on top of this, this is something that, kind of a vision that we're working on is, uh, let, let's run a secure uh, 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 system binary interface, uh, and that is, comes from this formally proven or specified augmented ISA that I just talked about. So then on top of this, once you have this uh, uh, secure SBI running, you can take something like uh, SEL4. This is a microkernel developed by uh, Gernot Heiser uh, uh, that is root as a formal specification. This, so this, and there's many other operating systems like this that are formally proven to be secure. And so now you have from the ground floor up to the uh, microkernel, you've got formally proven security, and then, uh, then you can run a rich OS like Linux, which has absolutely no guarantees of security anywhere. So you make sure that run all your uh, secure, security needs from the green level down, and, and basically what RISC-5 offers, which is unique to the industry and I think is compelling, is just formally proven, formally specified from the ground floor all the way up to the top. All right, so you know, coming, swinging back to uh, uh, microchip uh, and uh, what we do. So we talked about Polar Fire, uh, Polar Fire best FPGA, uh, but RISC V is the best processor. So we we put them together and uh, we we worked with uh, collaborated with Sci Five to create Polar Fire SOC. So the Polar Fire uh, FPGA is, is 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 that block down in the in blue in the lower. Uh, part of the slide, but the rest of that is a hardened uh, quad-core uh, quad application processor from Sci-5 plus a, a boot processor or security processor. So it's five cores uh, running uh, next to Polar Fire FPGA. And uh, there's a lot of innovation packed into that. Those are my themes of my message yesterday. You can work with your RISC-5 vendor and, and, and innovate. And we have innovated in a lot of domains uh, with Sci-5. So there's going to be a paper later today that, that this one microarchitecture, you can run Linux and run a real-time uh, application. So there's a lot of innovation there. Of course, you know, this lets you run in, in, in uh, high-reliability, safety-critical systems that uh, we're dominant in. And then uh, the low-power aspects of RISC-V and our FPGA, uh, very important for thermally and power-constrained systems. And then finally, uh, you know, I'll talk about what we've done in the area of security. So we have a non-volatile memory on our FPGAs, and so RISC-V has got a lot of security properties, but uh, we've added that with our non-volatile technology and the security technology of Polar Fire, and this is gonna be something, I think, really unique in the industry. Uh, so you, you take this, uh, you know, this, this block in, in, in the bottom here is on every Polar uh, Fire FPGA, it's packed with technology, the random number generator, uh, the, the puffs, there's some secure MVM, so there's encrypted non-volatile memory. So we can store a zero-stage bootloader in an encrypted state on that chip. When it powers up, uh, the, the uh, technology in that system service in there will decrypt that uh, uh, and attest that uh, zero-stage bootloader, pump it into the, one of the Sci-5 cores that then starts executing uh, the, the secure boot routine. And what it does is goes to that second flash, 128 uh, 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 K bytes of flash, where we store it in encrypted form the first stage bootloader. And so that, that, that zero stage bootloader is decrypting that and then authenticating against uh, uh, information that's also stored in that chip in the SBIC. So our part can basically boot up with zero information coming from the outside. Uh, and th you know, this is going to be a unique capability of a Polar Fire SOC. So you can get start, the chip is going to be available to buy. I wish I could bring one today to show you, but it's uh, be at, at the end of the year. But you can get started developing today. 
you know, one thing is, is, is Sci5 created the High 5 Unleashed board, which is basically the same processor that we used in Polar Fire SOC. And then we created the uh, Polar Fire High 5 Unleashed extension board, which has the Polar Fire uh, FPJ on it. Uh, and you stick them together, and basically you have the world's first RISC V PC. Uh, uh, so, so that's one way to start developing hardware with Polar Fire SOC. Uh, but then we also said, well, people maybe not want to buy that. It's hard. Uh, so we have what's called the virtual platform from a company called Ant Micro. Uh, so this is open source, and engineers really love to use this. But you can start basically running code on Polar Fire SOC using this virtual platform. And 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 what's really cool is you can actually make uh, emulate the entire board, and then you can uh, emulate systems of those boards. So I've seen you know 25. Windows open, all running Polar Fire SOC and their own images of Linux uh, with this uh, powerful uh, virtual platform. So Microchip has built what we call the My5 ecosystem uh, to really promote our uh, uh, RISC V. And so we've got partners like Sci5 and, and Hex5, uh, uh, IAR, uh, uh, not on the slide, I believe you're going to be a partner. Uh, uh, then we'll be. Uh, providing boards, operating systems, and basically everything you need to develop and, and, uh, with this RISC-V technology and PolarFire is going to be part of our My5 ecosystem. All right, so kind of want to end here, uh, change gears a bit. Uh, you know, the world, I look at the world today, uh, and these blue dots are basically fabs, the fabs for IDMs, so these are independent device manufacturers, so people make their own chips. So it's like basically Intel and the memory companies uh, make their own chips. That's important, lot, that's important for the industry, but that's not, the, the industry t we see today has been tons of innovation, innovation in mobile, innovation in networking, innovation in embedded, and that's been driven by the invention right here in this country, 1987, of the Foundry business model. Uh, and that Foundry business model uh, uh, is basically half the, half the ICs are built in foundries I would say like 90% of the innovation comes from, from foundries. And basically, you know, Taiwan is, in my opinion, the, the birthplace of, of golden ages. So we're entering a new golden age. RISC-V is part of that golden age, but, but that, that golden age also, uh, we're really glad to have Taiwan participating as well. Thanks. All right, any questions? So, for those who, uh, please. Is there So we have soft cores. Yeah, so he asked, is that, is that core I was showing, that RISC V from micro semi, now microchip, is it soft or hard? So we have soft cores, but what I was showing you is hard core. So just like you may be familiar with something called Zinc, uh, which is a hard arm with a Xilinx processor, we, our PolarFire SOC will be hard RISC V uh, that you can buy today as a separate chip, uh, but will be available at the end of the year. Uh, Yes, we, it's, it's uh, taping out shortly and will be available at the end of the year. Um, the second question is, that is, is there any ASIC visa for this part to be security information? Because they are many processors. Yeah, so, I mean, so it's a matter of timing in some extent. So when all this research was happening in the first golden age of computer architecture, people didn't know about security. They didn't care about security. So all this technology happened and, and, and they built all this great stuff, but they didn't think about security. So now it's like it's a, it's a, they're in a patch situation. Let's go fix this. Let's go fix that. Oop, there's timing attack. Let's go fix that. RISC V, we, can, uh, we know we're aware of all this. Security is important. It's more important. So we can start building that from, from, the, from the ground up. So intrinsically, uh, the, the ISA itself, the, you know, the way that you, uh, uh, you know, add two numbers, it's no more secure in ARM or Intel or anything else. But it's the ability to uh, be aware of these things and design your whole system is, is risk five based. Hi, Dan. Um, may I ask, uh, did you propose that uh, architecture to security tax group, or it's a uh, risk five based uh, uh, SOC with uh, uh, security features you described? Yeah, Frank, can you kind of repeat the question? Okay. Yeah. Um, did you um, propose uh, the architecture to 
security task group in the Risk Five Foundation, or it's a um, microchips uh, uh, SOC with uh, uh, Risk Five base and uh, security function you described. So this chip here, Polar Fire SOC, if you're asking about this, is our basically our tech security tech adding Risk Five using security technology. Uh, that, that we already have. Since we're security experts, we knew how to build a system. Uh, but we can also run, you know, like Don showed, uh, you know, IP, because RISC-5 has certain aspects of it that, that, that natively can work, like uh, uh, what Hex-5's uh, uh, core, uh, solution can do, so that will run. And the rest of my talk, before that, with Gennard Heiser, that's a, a work that's in progress, uh, let me say. So the, so the uh, the, the ground floor, the compliance, and the formal spec, that's already basically done. Uh, that, that concept of uh, uh, the augmented ISA, uh, formally specified and working, that's, that's work in process. So you want to join the uh, uh, security working groups to have that discussion and participate. Okay, thank you.